Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Paul Rockley and I work for the Administrative Data Centre down in Cork. Um, John is my boss. I'm going to be talking about the potential of air codes to enable decision making at local level um, today. So this is just the raw, just the shape of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the motivation for geospatial data. Um, I think you've heard a lot about that and you'll probably hear more of it um, throughout the day or morning. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the work that we're doing in the CSO to geocode um, data sets. Uh, when I say geocode, that is simply putting on geospatial identifiers onto your records. Um, I'm also going to talk about the challenges that we um, have in uh, geocoding our current data sets. And then getting a bit more positive, we're going to look at the possibilities of what we can do uh, with good quality geospatial data, and then just conclusions. So section one, motivation for geospatial data. Um, basically, it's two things. It allows you to leverage the potential of admin data by ad adding geospatial identifiers to the data sets, which in turn allows you to make better decisions at local level um, more, better informed decisions, um, which is terribly important to all government bodies. Um, it, it's akin to a rifle approach versus a shotgun approach. It, it allows you to make more targeted decisions um, using your data. Um, I, I'm not a policy person, but it, it's easy enough to imagine what you could do um, with recent up-to-date geo geospatial admin data. Um, you could... Um, look at the short-term needs of unemployed, sick, um, young people. You could, if you knew the ages of, if you had accurate geospatial data for children zero to four, you could um, better plan your school capacity requirements um, for the future years. Um, you could also spot local areas of unemployment and better uh, direct your campaigns to them. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys probably have much better ideas than that, but the possibilities are endless. Um, so it's for these reasons that air codes are very important um, for the NDI data sets, and it's why the CSO and the NSB are working so hard through the NDI to, to get air code adoption um, coverage to a higher level. Ultimately, we would like to have air codes on all data sets in the N NDI. So. Um, moving on to the next section, which is geocoding in the CSO. Um, we've put in a lot of work on this, and I would rem be remiss if I didn't mention my colleague Thierry Vallet, who is sitting in the back row there, um, but he is the technical brains about, around this, really. I was brought in to uh, move the process from the SAS statistical program to R, and also to look at the efficiencies, because when we're looking at string matching, which is what we are doing, um, it takes an awful lot of computational power and these processes can take quite a long time. So um, we have two, I'm not going to get too technical here, you can uh, catch me at coffee break if you want um, to go into the details, but here we have um, roughly the two processes that we have. So in the absence of an error code, we, in the first instance, um, take the address string that we're given and we compare that to a master data set. In our case, it's GeoDirectory. Um, we look for the best match and if we get a good match, we can then get the air code. That slide is slightly wrong. You can also get the small area and also the electoral division. Uh, we also have issues, as I'm sure you know, about non-unique addresses in Ireland and the process is not magic. If you have an address that is shared with multiple properties, you cannot put an air code on that. Um, there are estimates out there that say about 30% of Irish addresses are non-unique. So then you move on to a probabilistic matching methods, um, which can then uh, give you air code, electoral division, and small areas uh, with varying degrees of accuracy. Um, so, Oh, it's, John's mentioned it already. It's important to mention again, though, um, we are, this work is done using a protected identifier, an identifier which preserves the matching um, or linking ability, at least, between data sets, but preserves the privacy of users or people who are in the data set. So, moving on. 
to the challenges, and specifically the challenges of geocoding uh, without air codes. Um, I, I'm sure most of you know the vagaries of Irish addresses. As I mentioned already, we have possibly 30% non-unique addresses. We also have Irish language addresses. Um, our process, because GeoDirectory does include Irish addresses, we can expand it and we are planning to do that to Irish addresses. We don't have that currently in place. Um, you can also have addresses that have a mixture of Irish and English, and I'm not sure how we're going to deal with that just yet. We have the issue of vanity addressing, which is where people typically um, write an address and they want to uh, imagine they're living in possibly a posher part of the city. Um, <laughs> and then you have over overall quality issues with your, your addresses. Um, Thierry gave me the example yesterday when I was asking for help with this presentation. Um, you could have somebody living in a rural area between two towns um, and for some reason they feel an affinity with this town but by rights their standard address, their, their proper address, the one that appears in GeoDirectory is this town. Um, so when they give the first address getting that match is quite tricky um, because they're using a different town to the standard address. There are so many different uh, foibles to Irish addresses that there's just too many to mention. Um, Another challenge is computing power, which is, uh, I mentioned already, this matching can take quite a while. Um, just to end on that, like most, all of those challenges can be sorted if you have an air code. You don't have to even consider any of these things in your matching routine. Um, so that's why it's so important that we up the coverage of air codes. Um, I'm not going to show you examples of all of the issues, uh, but this is, um, just to demonstrate that we also have non-unique addresses in urban areas. So this is the air code finder that um, is set up to allow people to find their air codes. Um, it's a fantastic site. Um, here we have an address to Cooler Road, Abbeyside, Dungarvan, County Waterford. And you'll see that I actually have three addresses there to Cooler Road um, that are all identical. So the only way the postman knows which one to go to is because he also has an an extra piece of the puzzle, which is the name of the people living in the houses. Um, of course, they all have different air codes, so again, if we had air codes, that wouldn't be an issue. As an aside, um, we can still um, get statistics to ED level or small area level, because in this case, all these non-unique addresses are in the same ED or small area. Moving on to rural areas, same website. This is an address, Maher Arorty, Gortahork, County Donegal. So when you put this address in to Air Code Finder, it comes back with the message there are a number of properties that share this address. In fact, there's over 100 properties that share that address. Um, so again, without air codes, that is a bit of a challenge. I don't know what the postman uh, does up there, but um, I, I, I guess they all have very unique uh, names. So, um, so that's just a brief run through of the challenges. And I'm um, going to move on to the possibilities now, um, just a bit more uh, positivity. So um, we've prepared the following demos to give an idea what can be achieved. We've used a DEASP data, data set called the uh, payments data set, which is all the social payments data. And we have used the April 2016 data set, which is the year or the month of the most recent census. Um, we did that just to provide some kind of a, a test of how we were doing with, with our um, work. Um, we've geocoded it to electoral division, and there's about 3,400 of them in the country. Uh, so what I'm going to show you a few maps. All of the counts are um, the number of recipients uh, receiving the given benefit, um, and they are standardized across the EDs by the number of residential delivery points as taken from the geodirectory. So the first example is pension recipients um, in the uh, state, and that shows 3,400 EDs. Um, it's divided into quintiles. Uh, the darker the color, the more uh, pensioners you have in that area as a proportion. So um, we've checked that against the census figures. 
the census actually shows a more distinct um, pattern. You, you can see a pattern there. In the west of the country, there appears to be more pensioners. In the census data, you'll actually see a stronger pattern. Um, we noticed, especially in Donegal, there was uh, an issue. Just for those of us who aren't from Ireland, Donegal is the county at the very top of the map. Um, you see some light uh, EDs there. They would be much darker. There would be much higher pr proportion of pensioners in those areas in the census data. Um, this, we think, could be caused by the fact that you could have pensioners there, so they're included in the census, but they're not actually paid by Department of Social Protection. They're maybe may paid from the UK um, or another state. Also, there's Gwaeltacht areas up there as well, and our process doesn't actually um, process them at the moment. Um, and also, we have an issue with, with our coding. We found that two EDs uh, in Donegal were taking a huge amount of the records. Um, the eagle-eyed eagle people in the audience will notice that our fifth decile, the, the very top darkest one, has a range of 320 um, pensioners per thousand residences up to nearly 3,000 per thousand residences. What that means, if you believe it, is that the, for each residential property in that area, there are three pensioners. I doubt that. Um, so that um, is something that we have to look at. It could be that our process is just concentrating too many people from within Donegal in these two EDs. It's just to demonstrate this is a complex issue for us um, in the absence of air codes and um, we're constantly improving the process as we go along. Um, I, I suppose also just to give the overview of the two data sets, the census figures show that there were 545,000 pensioners in the country. The data set that we have geocoded here, the DEASP payments file, show that we have 430 pensioners located in the state being paid by DEASP. That's a difference of 115,000. Um, so that will be a challenge when we're talking about getting census-like figures, uh, as John was talking about, from 2024. Um, but that's perhaps separate from, from the geocoding. Um, so then the next example uses the exact same data set, um, except now we are on the NUTS 3 Dublin region. You can, for those of us who don't know Dublin that well, the city centre is shown with the smaller um, EDs, polygons, in the maps there. So um, again, the darker the colour, the higher propor the proportion of the recipients in the area. So we have child benefit in the red on the left, we have pensions, green in the middle, and we have unemployment recipients over on the right there with that purpley lilac-y colour. Um, what I might do is just give you a few seconds just to take it in yourselves and see if, you, if it makes sense to, to you with your knowledge of the city. Sorry, I have to explain. My boss was um, daring me to have a silence of five seconds. He didn't think I could do it, but I think I, <laughs> he's just on a very slow countdown. I think I've done it. Um, so uh, just to show child benefit, um, we have actually compared these to the census. Um, we mapped the census figures as well, and they tell a very similar story. So with the child benefit recipients, um, you would expect to have more families on the outskirts of the city, and that is borne out by that. You'll see that there's one ED which is very, very red. When I looked into that, that's Lucan North, and it's a strongly rural area, but there's one very big, uh, very new estate, which we think might be part of the reason for why that is, is, is so um, red. New estates tend to have families with kids, um, typically. Um, we'll look into that in more detail. Uh, pension recipients, um, we see a pattern going from uh, east-west, um, north and south of the city. So you have, I apologise now for people who don't know the, the geography, but you have from Hoth running west and you have from Dalkey running west, kind of a line of um, a high proportion of pensioners, which is borne out by the census data. 
Um, and then from the unemployment recipients, you can see um, there are a high propensity of, or high proportion of unemployment recipients to the west and to the north of the city in comparison to the slightly, well, the more affluent areas of South Dublin along the coast, um, which um, is something that um, does make sense, and it, it does square with the census figures. Um, I will be making these slides available online, so if, but if you have any questions, um, by all means let me know. And I just have a very quick conclusion. It's just use air codes. Um, if you want good, dis if you want dis good decisions at a local level, they're just hugely important. So thank you very much.